Endlessly ever after, pick your path to countless fairy tale endings by Laurel Snyder and Dan Santa. Your mama shakes you out of bed. She says, my darling dear, you need to run to grandma's quick. She's feeling ill, I fear. Now take this cake to cheer her up and have a lovely day, but don't mind the path, for danger tends to lurk along the way. So up you jump, you give a nod, and through the room you tear. But wait, you'll need to grab your coat. It's rather cool out there. What next, Rosie? Which coat will you wear? To slip on your coziest faux fur coat, turn to page 20. To grab your favorite red cape, turn to page 6. Inside your coat, as warm as toast, you skip through every glade. You'll soon be at your grandma's house and sipping lemonade. But when you get to down the path, you find you're somewhere new, a house you've never seen before. It's brick, the door bright blue. You know your gran is waiting. She's sick and stuck a bed. But wouldn't it hurt to quickly but would it hurt to quickly knock on this fine door instead? What now, Rosie? Are you going to knock on this completely unfamiliar door? You've wasted plenty of time already, and you know it. To hurry on to Grandma's house, turn to page 44. To stop for just a minute and meet your neighbors, turn to page 12. Your Grandma's waiting for her cake. You will not let her down. But as you near her cottage, a shadow hits the ground. A wolf has found you, gives a grin. My furry friend, let's flee. I bet you're headed where I am, the deep woods jamboree. We're sure to find delicious treats and wolfish games galore. Why don't you wander off the path? Such fun we have in store. What next, Rosie? That sounds like fun. Are you going to go with him? To head along with your new furry friend, turn to page 47. To avoid the wolfish invitation and head on to Grandma's, turn to page 28. Of course you say, no thanks, and run as fast as you can flee. You get so hot you have to hang your coat up on a tree. But since you've stopped, you think you'll sit and take a tiny rest. And when you do, somehow the sun slips away to swifts quickly to the west. At last you wake. It's gotten late. You have to go now, quick. You scurry over the path. But which way should you pick? What now, Rosie? You really shouldn't have taken that nap. Now you've lost your way. To try this way, turn to page 76. To head along that way, turn to page 34. You dash along the path and soon arrive in, at Granny's gate. Come in, she calls, and yet you don't. You halt, you hesitate because her voice sounds different, all breathy, hoarse, and low. Down deep inside, you long to hide, or maybe turn and go. What next, Rosie? You finally got to Grandma's, and now you want to leave? To go and visit your grandmother like a good girl, turn to page 22. To follow your instincts and run like heck, turn to page 76. You run until you find a house you've never seen before, with choco-coated gummy bits all stuck above the door. The porch is made of toffee. There are no bricks. 
Instead, the walls are glazed with caramel and built of gingerbread. You knock at once, you whistle, you wait, and wander. And at last, you try the knob and find it breaks off in your hand. What next, Rosie? Surely you can take one little bite, right? To take a wee little bite of the knob, turn to page 18. To step inside and have a look around, turn to page 59. You take one tiny nibble. You lick and chew and bite. It's extra yummy, gooey gummy, crisp and rich and light. Until you hear a cackle, a shout of witchy glee, you find you're caught in licorice. You try to wriggle free, but it's no use. You're stuck for good. No matter how you rage, you're trapped forever in a magic candy-coated cage. The end. Story number two. Your mama shakes you out of bed. She says, my darling dear, you need to run to grandma's quick. She's feeling ill, I fear. Now take this cake to cheer her up and have a lovely day. But mind the path, for danger tends to lurk along the way. So up you jump, you give a nod, and through the room you tear. But wait, you'll need to grab your coat. It's rather cool out there. What next, Rosie? Which coat will you wear? To slip on your coziest faux fur coat, turn to page 20. To grab your favorite red cape, Turn to page six. A wolf is waiting by the path out in the morning sun. I like your fine red cape, he says. You heading someplace fun? I'm off to see my grandma, you tell your toothy friend. Her house is purple with the gate down at the very end. I haven't time to chat just now. I've got a ways to walk, but have a lovely afternoon. Another time we'll talk. The wolf just nods his furry head and quickly slips away. He flicks his tail and disappears into the sunny day. And standing on the path alone, you fear you've been unwise. You can't forget his claws or jaws, his shifty yellow eyes. You wish you hadn't met that wolf. You wish he didn't know exactly how you plan to walk and where you mean to go. What now, Rosie? Are you going to let that wolf scare you away from your adventure? Yes, silly. Wolves are no joke. To go back inside and start fresh tomorrow, turn to page two. To take a deep breath and journey on, turn to page 50. You will not let that mean old wolf destroy your lovely day. That furry bully has no right to bother you this way. But you've a care for safety, and so you shed your hood. The sun is bright, and you'll be fine. It's warm now in the wood. The smell of flowers fills the air, so fragrant and so sweet. But then you notice there's a sound, a somber, steady beat. You know your grandma's waiting but she'll be home all day. You've got some time to wander. The question is, which way? What next, Rosie? What should you do with your extra minutes? To gather some fragrant, fragrant flowers for Grandma, turn to page 16. To follow the sound of the beating drum, turn to page eight. The somber drumbeat leads you to a coffin in a glen. Inside, you find a maiden fair. Around it, seven men. The drummer stops and waves hello, then reaches for your cake. So kind of you to come, he says. We'll serve this at the wake. You're not quite certain what to do. You don't mean to be rude, but you don't know this pretty girl. And what's your grandma's, and that's your grandma's food. Now what, Rosie? 
Are you going to let those dwarves take Grandma's goodies? It's only cake, and they are really sad to let them have the treat. Turn to page 66. No way! You've already wasted too much time to grab your cake and head to Grandma's. Turn to page 54. You shake your head. I have to leave or Mama will be miffed. I'm sorry that your friend is dead. I hope your spirits lift. But once you're back upon the path, you hear an angry shout. Somewhere a boy is bellowing. You wonder what about. You've wasted too much time today. You really need to fly. But in your gut, you wonder what and who and how and why. What next, Rosie? First a drumbeat and now a shout? Are you really going to waste more time? To ignore that noise and run straight to Grand's, turn to page 34. Who are you kidding? You have to know what all the yelling is about. Turn to page 56. You head off through the trees again. You track the shouts of rage and find them coming from a kid, a boy about your age. He kicks and shouts and punches. He bellows and he rants. He's also dripping wet and wears a frown and underpants. You blush until your face is red. You want to run away, but then you're also curious. How did he get this way? Now what, Rosie? Are you really going to hang around this wet, pantsless boy? To head home now and avoid this ridiculous mess altogether, turn to page 64. To ask what's wrong and help this poor kid, turn to page 24. This day has been too much for you, and so you turn to go. You scroll along that same old path, you take it extra slow. As evening falls, you notice folks all heading different ways. You watch them all walk and wonder, what happened in their days? The end.